Basically what it is, it's a problem like this. They give you like a flat sheet. Maybe it's a sheet of metal, maybe it's a sheet of cardboard, paper, etc. But what they tell you is that they're going to cut out squares, okay, of equal size from each of the four corners. Okay, so what happens is you start with a flat piece like this, you cut out these corners and then you fold up the sides so that the box is open, okay, from the top like that. Now, when you do that, what happens is when you take away X from both sides, this length here becomes 10 minus 2x because you're taking x off of both sides. Sometimes students make the mistake of just saying 10 minus 1x. It's 10 minus 2x. And same thing with this side. You're cutting off x, you're cutting off x. So this length here is just going to be 8 minus 2x. And then when you fold up these sides, okay, you get a height of x. So when you write the volume, okay, as a function of x, it looks something like this. V of x, okay, the volume is a function of x, equals x times 8 minus 2x times 10 minus 2x. Okay, so all it is is the length times the width times the height. Okay, so whether you want to call this one the length or this one the length, it doesn't really matter. Um, but length times width times height is the volume of a, a rectangular prism or a box. But then the next concept or the next thing we want to talk about is how big can these squares be? Well, there's a limit, obviously. You, you can't take a square out that's so large that it eliminates the whole rectangle, correct? So we have to kind of look. So as these squares get bigger and bigger, right, can you kind of see this? Eventually it's going to consume, you know, the entire width or the entire length of the box. So what we can do is if we look at these quantities here, we know that 8 minus 2x has to be what? Has to be greater than 0. Otherwise, if it's not greater than 0, you're not even taking out a square out of the corner at all. But it has to be... Um, you know, it can't, be, it can't be negative, right? So basically, let's see if we can solve this equation. So you can see here, if we subtract 8 and we divide by a negative 2, okay, when you divide by a negative number, what happens? The inequality sign changes direction, and you can see that x has to be less than 4. Okay, so that's the idea here. x has to be less than 4. If x was 5, we'd have 8 minus 10, which is a negative width and we can't have a negative value. So basically what we're looking at is if we graph this on the number line, here's 0, here's 4, x has to be greater than 0 but less than 4. Okay, so you're with me so far? When you look at the length, same thing. This here has to be, you know, has to be um, greater than 0 but also less than 0. So you can see that the uh, greatest value that x can take on here is going to be 5. If it's 6, again, you're going to be into the negative range and we can't take uh, you know, more uh, length than there is available here. So if we took these squares of side length 5 and 5, that would basically eliminate the, the rectangle altogether, right? So that means that for this one, the x has to be between 0 and 5. So that's the restricted domain there, okay? And then with the height here, you can see that x has to be uh, greater than 0, okay? So if it was 0, you're not taking a square out of the corners at all. It has to be greater than 0. So what I'm doing here is I'm plotting these all on the same number line, and you can see where they're overlapping here is between 0 and 4. That's the intersection of the three sets. So that means that our domain for this problem is uh, x has to be between 0 and 4. Okay, so I'm just using the interval notation, not including 0, not including 4. So the next thing that we can do is you can either, depending on what class you're in, you can either graph this, and if you graph it, it's going to look something like this. It's going to cross here at 0. It's going to cross here at 4. It's going to cross here at 5. The leading coefficient is positive. It's going to be going up to the right. Okay, it's an odd degree. So it's going to be going the opposite direction to the left. Okay, so down here like this. But since we're only looking at this restricted domain from 0 to 4, this is the part of the graph we're going to zero in on right here. If you want to maximize the volume, which is oftentimes what they, they ask in this type of a problem, what you could do is you could use your calculator to find this relative maximum, this high point here. Then you look at the x coordinate of the point and that tells you the size of the squares that you need to cut out to maximize the volume of this box. Now if you're in calculus, what you can do is you can take the derivative of this quantity, okay, and set the derivative equal to zero. Because when the derivative is equal to zero, what you're doing is you're finding, okay, where the slope or the instant radius I'm sorry, excuse me, the instantaneous rate of change is equal to zero, okay, so where it's a horizontal line. So if you take the derivative and set equal to zero, you can find out where this x value lies in between zero and four, okay? You're not interested in the one that's between four and five, just the restricted domain here. So 
This is a common problem and something to get used to seeing because you'll see it in uh, all those different classes I mentioned before. But this is how you set it up. Length times width times height. You look at the restricted domain and then you can analyze the graph over that restricted domain to find out what's going to maximize the volume of the box. This right here is V of X and this axis here is X. So again, I hope this helped you understand. Uh, subscribe to the channel. Check out some of my other videos on Mario's Math Tutor and YouTube channel. And I look forward to helping you in the future videos. I'll talk to you soon.